G'day, and welcome to AOS Coach. Heroes in Age of Sigma have become more heroic on the tabletop using heroic actions. And in this video, I'm gonna look at those heroic action abilities in third edition Age of Sigma. Each player only gets to use one heroic action per hero phase. So you're gonna to wanna to make the most of it. So what is a heroic action? A heroic action is an ability that is activated by each player in each of the hero phases. You get to choose one hero to perform the heroic action. So not every hero, just one of your heroes. You will know which hero is eligible because of the hero keyword, which you're gonna find at the bottom of the war scroll. Heroic actions are an additional ability for your hero and it doesn't stop them from using other things like issuing command abilities, casting spells, chanting prayers, dispelling, etc, etc. Hero actions do not require you to spend a command point to activate. However, as I previously mentioned, you are only limited to one heroic action per turn, and it's not tied to your general either. So anyone can use it so long as it's a hero and you can use it in your turn and your opponent's turn, but you couldn't use two in my turn. Players can choose from four heroic actions from the core rules that you can find in 7.1, but we'll also go through it in this video. The four heroic actions are heroic leadership, heroic willpower, their finest hour, and heroic recovery. There are no additional heroic actions in the General's Handbook 2021. However, additional ones might be introduced in future battle packs or battle tomes. So let's look at each of these heroic actions and see what they're all about and how you might use them. So heroic leadership allows you to pick one friendly hero and roll a dice. Now you get to add two to the dice roll if the general has been slain. On a four plus, you receive one command point that can be spent to allow your hero to issue a command. If your general is on the table, you're going for a four plus to generate that additional command point. However, if your general is slain, then you'll use a two plus to generate yourself a command point. So what are some of the considerations? With so many ways to spend a command point throughout the battle, there really is no downside on having an additional command point up your sleeve for an inspiring presence, an unleashed hell, all that attack or all that defense, or even a command ability that's on your leader's war scroll. It's never bad to have an extra one. And if your general is slain, you're not going to regenerate that additional command point at the start of your hero phase. So heroic leadership can be really helpful to bridge the gap from that lost CP if your general has been slain. And as I mentioned, it's never a bad thing to have an additional command point. I've always found it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Next up is heroic willpower and that allows you to pick one friendly hero that is not a wizard. If you do it in your enemy's hero phase, that hero can attempt to unbind one spell in their hero phase as if it, they were a wizard. So if your enemy is trying to cast a spell, you can try to unbind that spell. If you choose heroic willpower in your hero phase, then your hero can attempt to dispel one endless spell that is already on the battlefield as if they were a wizard. So what are some of the considerations? Well, in your hero phase, if you use heroic willpower, it means that you can dispel an endless spell on the table that was already cast by yourself or your opponent without taking up a spell cast option from a wizard in your army, which means you're gonna be able to fully unleash all of your spells without having to sacrifice one of those spell casts. In your hero phase, it's gonna mean that you can have an additional unbind up your sleeve that's gonna help you keep your enemy spells and endless spells at bay. I always find that if there is a wizard on the table and it has two casts or three casts, often my wizards only have one unbind. So having additional unbind is only gonna be helpful for me stopping my opponent. And should there be arcane terrain on my side of the table, especially if my hero is within one inch of that arcane terrain, it is gonna give me a plus one to my cast, unbind or dispels, which again will be helpful either in my hero phase or my opponent's hero phase, should I activate heroic willpower. Next up is their finest hour, and I get to pick one of my friendly heroes and add plus one to the wound rolls for attacks made by that hero until the end of that turn. On top of that, I get to add one to the save rolls for attacks, basically. So it's plus one a wound, plus one to save until the end of that turn. Now, this one has a small caveat that the others don't have, and that is I can only carry out their finest hour once per hero 
per battle. So I can use it on multiple heroes, but one single hero can't take their finest hour more than once. So you'll really need to choose when you're going to activate their finest hour because when you do they are about to go super saiyan and probably do more damage and be more dur durable in that particular combat they're preparing for so it's going to be really good especially for your combat orientated heroes or a wizard that finds itself in a, a combat that doesn't really want to be in and um, you just got to get out asap but normally this is going to combine really nicely with a combat hero and as I mentioned, uh, heroic action, this particular one can only be used once per game per hero. It is going to combine really nicely with all that attack for a plus one to hit as well as plus one to wound and plus one to save. Or if you've got other command orientated command abilities, that's going to really boost their profile. Any way to do mortal wounds on sixes to hit, uh, any additional attacks, any way you can boost them up. You want to make the most of this once per game ability. Remember that you can only boost your profile to a, a maximum of plus one to hit wound and Obviously, you can have more than plus one to hit, plus one to wound, but the overall total modifier can only be plus one. So if your opponent does have a counter, a, a debuff to, to hitting or to wounding, um, that would kind of reduce it down. But if I have plus seven to my wound roll, I can still only end with a total of a plus one. So just keep that in mind. Don't stack too many pluses to wound not that there's many out there but just be mindful of all those pluses to wound should you go for their finest hour and finally you get to do a heroic recovery and this allows you to do one hero and they make a dice roll of 2d6 if that roll is less than the bravery characteristic so compare the dice roll to the bravery characteristic of the hero making a heroic recovery if it is less than their bravery characteristic, that hero is going to heal up to D3 wounds allocated. If the roll is equal to the hero's bravery, they heal one. So this is going to be probably extremely popular, especially with heroes with a lot of wounds. Um, they're going to want to keep them on the table as long as possible. And if you're on a monster or if you've got a degrading profile, you'll notice some of those really big heroes have a damage profile table. And as they suffer damage, their um, effectiveness goes down, whether it's their movement, their attacks, their damage, a lot of things will go down in their profile. So the more you can keep your hero healed up, the longer they're going to be on the table. And if I had a, a five wound hero, unless they were super critical to my battle tactic, I probably wouldn't use it on my five wound hero unless it was critical. But, you know, I'm really trying to keep my monster heroes, especially as I'm generating more battle tactic victory points by having a monster on the table. I want to keep them on the table as long as possible. If you've got a bravery characteristic of 10, the su success rate is about 90%. I think it's like 91%. If you've got bravery of 9, it's about 80%. 83%. If you've got a bravery 8, it's 72%. And if you're on bravery 7, it's a 58%. So obviously the higher your bravery and most heroes do have a higher bravery than your average troop but the higher the higher bravery the better chance you're going to get to get um the, the d3 wounds as opposed to the one wound healed so given that you only get one heroic action per turn you know you've really got to choose wisely in my opinion in the early game, in turn one to turn two, likely when I'm not in the thick of battle or I'm just starting off in battle, I'm probably going to use things like heroic leaderships to generate me more command points early on that allows me to do more things with my units, whether it's a flat run roll, whether it's going to be unleashing hell if somebody tries to charge my shooting units, having an inspiring presence up my sleeve while issuing other commands will be extremely important, especially if I've reinforced units. As the game goes on and my leaders are starting to take damage and they're probably in combat, I'm probably going to start looking at things like heroic action, especially around like turn two to turn four, to keep them alive as long as possible. And if I've buffed myself up to the nines or if I'm thinking about going in and trying to do a, a killing blow on a unit that's holding an objective or some type of, there's my opportunity to take down their general, I might apply their finest hour. With heroic willpower, for me, I'm not a big fan of it, mostly because it's very situational, right? I can see real value in, in the others, while the heroic willpower might only come up 
if I really need that additional dispel of a, a dispel of an endless spell or an unbind of an enemy spell. And, it, and that can be helpful, especially with armies that don't have a natural wizard or don't have a lot of wizards. But overall, I think, you know, things like heroic leadership, heroic recovery, and their finest hour will probably be the, the three ones that I'll go to. And obviously their finest hour only being a once per game thing per hero. But I'd love to hear from you, you know, what are the ones that you have found the most value? Now, they've all got value depending on, you know, which heroes you've got and how you're building. And, and you know, you'll have an idea of when to use them. But like a good chess player, you'll have to choose as the game is progressing. You can't just have a plan to go, right, turn one, I'm going to do this, turn two, I'm going to do this, because it just doesn't work like that. And, you know, th there'll be times where, you know, heroic willpower sounds great. I'd love an additional uh, unbind. But then I come up against Luminous Realm Lords. And really, how valuable is that going to be with, with heroic power? May willpower, maybe, maybe not. I don't really know. But um, let me know what you're thinking. And I probably definitely will be thinking, well, I definitely, I definitely will be looking at, you know, heroic leadership, heroic recovery as my two primary ones. Um, as I mentioned, heroic leadership probably early, recovery middle to late game, and then the other ones coming in situationally. But let me know how you're playing around with it and which ones you're finding the most value in. Comment section, you know where it's at. Thanks for sticking around until the end. I hope you found that video interesting and you walked away with a few new ideas. If you did, I would appreciate it if you hit like on the video as well as left me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. The conversation will continue over on Discord, so links down below in the episode description if you want to join the Discord and continue the Age of Sigmar conversation. I want to give a massive shout out as well to these absolute bloody legends, these champions who have continued to support me through Patreon or YouTube members. That is going directly into supporting the maintenance and the growth of this channel. So thank you very much, guys. Much appreciated. And until next time, roll more sixes.